This video we're going to look at coordinate geometry for AS level mathematics. Now everything you'll see in this video you have seen before at regular GCSE mathematics so there's nothing too difficult in this at all. First thing we're going to look at is the distance between two points uh, or the length of a line segment. So the equation for this if you've got uh, one of the points is A which is x1 y1 the other point is B which is x2 y2 then the distance between the two points is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared and then y2 minus y1 squared where this comes from is just uh, by Pythagoras theorem so if you imagine you've got a point here which is x1 y1 and you have a point over here which is x2 y2 there's a length between them and if I link those up with we horizontal that's my length I call it L and this is a vertical chain, so this is um, y2 minus y1, I'll put that in a bracket just, and this length here is a horizontal uh, change, and it's x2 minus x1. So by Pythagoras, uh, l squared l squared is going to be equal to, the, the square root, I'm sorry, l squared is going to be equal to this thing squared, plus this thing squared, so that means l is going to be equal to the square root of this thing squared, plus this thing squared. Okay, I'm going to use this formula to do the uh, next bit of this, this next example. So this example says, find the distance between A, which is minus 3, uh, 7, and B, which is 4, minus 5. So I'm just going to say L is equal to the square root. And I'm just going to write this slightly differently in the formula. I'm going to say the X difference squared plus the Y difference squared. That's just my preferred way of saying it, but it's exactly the same as this. is exactly the same, obviously, as your X2 uh, minus X1 uh, squared, etc. Okay, so I'm just going to fire into my formula. And so it's just a square root. So um, I'm going to just say minus 3, then minus 4. There's my first X value minus my second X value squared. And then I'll do my uh, first Y value, which is 7 minus my second y value which was a minus 5 so minus minus 5 become i'll just write it as minus minus 5 just to show us here that's going to be squared and if we tidy that up that's the square root of minus 7 and that's all squared and then minus 7 minus minus 5 is minus 7 plus 5 which is going to be 12 and that's all squared and then we can just do that on our calculator to see what we get just i'm just going to show a wee bit more working out here but just to show you minus 7 squared is going to be 49 and 12 squared is going to be 144. So if you add those two things, you're going to get uh, the square root of 100 and 193. And you could give up to whatever number of decimal places. Let me just do up my calculator very quickly. 100 square root of 193 is equal to, and I'm just going to say 13.9, and we'll say units, and that's to 1. Uh, sorry, one decimal place, I should have said there, one dp uh, to one dp. Okay, so that's our first example done. And the only thing I changed there, I changed my uh, formula to the square root of x different squared plus uh, uh, y different squared. This example says prove that the triangle with vertices, so that's just corners, uh, a, which is 3, 7, B, which is 1, minus 4, and C, which is minus 2, minus 3, is isosceles. So I'm just going to work out the length of all of the sides. So I'm going to say length and then subscript AB. So that just means the length from A to B is equal to, and I'm just going to work this out. So uh, it's going to be 3 minus 1 squared plus, and then 7 minus minus 4 squared and then this work on it we'll see what that's going to be that's going to give you 2 squared uh, plus 11 squared square root of all that so what's that going to be 4 plus 121 that's going to be a square root of 125 now we'll go on and we'll do our length of we'll do ac next and you do your length of ac uh, so a to c it's going to be 3 minus minus 2 squared plus and it's going to be 7 minus minus 3 squared that doesn't look very much like a minus minus 3 let me just fix that that's a bit messy apologies uh, minus 7 minus minus 3 and then that tidies up so 3 minus minus 2 becomes 3 plus 2 so it becomes 5 squared 
7 minus minus 3 becomes 7 plus 3, so it's just going to be 10 squared. And again, if you work that out, that's going to be 25 plus 100, so it's going to be the square root of 125. Okay, so we've shown that two sides are the same. I definitely would work on and find out what the length of the last side is. So if you think about it, uh, proving something is I as I saw we've we've proved there's two sides equal, but we don't know what the third side is. It could well be the square root of 125, and then in actual fact it would be an equilateral triangle. So we need to prove that there's two sides equal, really just. So we're just going to look at our length of, and the only one we haven't done then is BC. So length of BC is the square root of, and so it's going to be one minus minus two squared plus minus four minus minus three squared which is going to be uh, the square root of and one plus two is going to be three squared and then minus four minus minus uh, three is going to be minus four plus three which is just going to be minus one squared and if you work that out that's going to be that's going to be nine plus one which is going to be just our ten so it's the square root okay. square root of ten Okay, slight interruption there, but we can see there we have got two sides the same, so we'll just say, uh, therefore, two sides the same length, which implies that it is an isosceles triangle. Okay, the next bit is the midpoint of a line. So the midpoint of a line, and again, it's a point A, which is x1, y1, B, which is x2, y2. So what you do is basically the average of the ordinates. So the x, two x values get added this time, and then divided by two, the two y values get added and divided by two. So we're just gonna look at an example on this one. Nice, easy example. So it says, find, uh, find the midpoint of the line joining minus three, seven. And minus seven minus four. I just use capital M to denote uh, denote my midpoint. So my x value is added. It's going to be minus three plus minus seven minus three plus minus seven, and then that gets divided by two. And then my next one is seven, and then plus minus four, and that gets divided by two. So that's a mess. We'll just tidy it up. Minus seven mi minus three minus seven is minus ten. That gets divided by two. Remember. And then we've got seven plus minus four is just gonna be three, and that gets divided by two. And then we'll just tidy that up again. Working across the page, because I've got no space, but a good mathematician really would work down the page. That's going to be minus, fi minus five, and then 1.5. Next thing we're gonna look at is the gradient of a straight line. Gradient is a measure of the steepness of a slope and the direction of a slope. So if a slope goes up, as you go from right to left, left to right, sorry, then it's a positive gradient. If it goes downwards, as you move from left to right, then it has a negative gradient. And the greater the number, then the greater the steepness. So to find the gradient, and the, the letter we use for gradient is lowercase m of a line joining two points, then we uh, the points x1, y1, and b, which is x2, y2, we use the formula m is equal to and we've got delta y over delta x, which means a change in y over the change of x. Or you could say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And on that note, you could have done it the other way around. And by that, I mean you could have done um, y1 minus y2 all over x1 minus x2. But notice the key thing here is I've started with the second one on the top and the bottom, and I've finished with the first one on the top and the bottom, or here, I've started with the first on the top and the bottom, and then I've finished with the second on the top and the bottom. So that order does matter, and it's always the Y's on the top. And another way we could say this then, it's just your Y difference over your X difference. And lastly, another way you may have seen this down the school, was it is your rise over run. So how much you go up, divided by how much you go across, which is absolutely fine as well. Uh, another couple of things then, parallel and perpendicular. So what do these words actually mean? So parallel lines have the same gradient. Perpendicular lines have gradients which multiply to give minus one. And I'll explain another, once we get onto that example, I'll have another way of doing that, which is even easier again. 
Okay, so this exam first example says find the gradient of find the gradient of the line that passes through two minus one and four minus five. So we'll just say m um, m is equal to. I don't know why I jumped the green there. M is equal to, and I'm just going to say y difference, so y diff over x difference. And we're just going to fill this in, see what we get. Again, I'm working across the page. I shouldn't really. So I'm going to start with this y. I could have started with the other y, but I'm going to start with the minus 1. So I'm starting with that minus 1. So that means if I start with that minus 1, then I have to also start with the 2 on the bottom line. So I've just underlined those just to keep me right so I know which ones I'm starting with. So my y was minus 1, then minus, minus 5, and then my x value was 2, and then minus 4, which becomes minus 5, minus 1, plus 5, over 2 minus 4, which becomes 4 over minus 2, which is equal to minus 2. The last example for this video says find the gradient of the line perpendicular to the line joining A, which is 3, 4, and B, which is 7 minus 8. Now, first of all, it said earlier on the notes that if two lines are perpendicular, then the product of their gradients is minus 1. Another way of saying it, is for example i don't know what the gradient is in this example but if you had a first line had a gradient of five then the second line would say that uh, that's your m of a say and then your m of line b gradient of line b would be the negative reciprocal so all you do really is turn it upside down because and change the sign five remember you could think of being as five over one so if you turn that upside down it becomes minus one over five another example if you had uh, another line and it had a grid A, line A, and it had a gradient maybe minus 2 over 3. Then line B, if it's perpendicular, would be turn it upside down, so it's just 3 over 2, and change the sign. So that uh, minus becomes a plus, so it's just 3 over 2, which is also 1.5. So it's in the perpendicular lines then have their gradients will be the negative reciprocal of each other. So we're going to use that uh, idea, that principle, in this example. And it says, uh, so find the gradient of the line uh, perpendicular to the line joining A, which is 3, 4, and B, which is uh, 7 minus 8. So I'm just going to say the gradient of AB, or I could have said M of AB, is equal to, so remember this is my Y difference over my X difference. So I'm just going to work this out and see what I get. So my Y difference, I'm going to start with this one. So 4 minus minus 8 over 3 minus 7, and 4 minus minus 8 is going to be 12. 3 minus 7 is going to be minus 4, so that works out to be minus 3. So we'll go up here, and we'll just say, therefore, perpendicular gradient is just equal to the negative reciprocal of that, so it's just equal to uh, 1 over 3, remember 3 is the same as 3 over 1, so flip it upside down, becomes 1 over 3, and the minus here just becomes positive, so that's why there's no sign here which uh, implies then it's positive, so positive uh, one third, and that is it done.